Morning all, we'll get started I think. So just uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and their elders past and present. Thank you all for coming along this morning. What we're going to do is a bit of a, um, a, tag, a tag team effort between uh, Jamie and myself. Uh, what we go through essentially some of the fire season preparedness and there's been some, and I'll talk about it in a, minute, a bit of movement in the um, uh, forecasting of what's going to happen this summer. So I thought it's important that we give you that briefing. Um, Jamie will give you a bit of an understanding of some of the preparedness work. We will then probably talk a little bit about what's happening in the reform space, but I get a sense most people are over that. So unless you really want to, um, we'll give you a brief over, overview and Liz is here if you need any um, further details and then we'll just open up for broad questions. So a fair bit to get through in our allocated half an hour. I've got no idea how to work this machine thing here. So someone might help me through it. So thanks, Jamie. Um, oh, you're as good as I am. <laughs> arrow on my keyboard. Okay, got it. Um, so preliminary outlook, so that's what I just talked about. So essentially what's happened is that the, um, the, uh, the CSIRO, the Bureau of Meteorology, the CRC people, all the scientists come together. They put together um, their sense of what's happening from a weather point of view, what's happening with the, uh, the, the dryness, and then um, do some forecasting and come up with what they think is a prediction for this particular summer. They, they do a couple of different iterations of this and then there's a formal launch of it at, at the AFAC conference. So it, it's kept pretty tight and other than the fact we're videoing today so we can share it with the world, we're not telling anyone else. So, um, so that's a joke, thanks for laughing, yeah, good idea. <laughs> um, the, so the reality is, as you would know, that um, uh, 2000, so this is a, a reflection on, so this time last year we were in flood. Essentially most of CFA pe people were heavily involved in flood, so lots of water around and uh, around the state. So let's push the button. The, the, the interesting thing for us, and this is the, the rainfall deficit from an Australian perspective, is that you can see now pretty well where it's almost the driest on record of rainfall deficiencies and if you have a look particularly in Western Australia so interesting enough you could suspect that they are also looking at a an early fire season as we are and you can come right down into the Victoria and I think there's a better map of showing Victoria in, in more detail here and you get a sense here that um, particularly that western part of Gippsland um, that you look at you look at the northeast areas as well and all of a sudden, for those who have been around a while, that you can see where we've had campaign fires in the northeast and where we've had campaign fires in Gippsland, we've got um, high levels of um, uh, deficient rainfalls. Now, Moose is here, I notice. If, you can, if I get anything wrong, you're the, you're the bugger that keeps me honest, mate. So you feel free to jump in at any time. So, um, so just be aware. So that's already out. Um, so it is very much dependent of what happens um, moving forward. The other, so we look at all this sort of data um, that's available. And what, essentially what this data says to us, and I'll, and I'll take you to the bottom line here, there, is that it, it essentially says that with the cropping situation and the huge growth potential within spring, it gives increased fire load. It also brings forward a potential for fire starting as early as October. So what that is sort of early indications here are saying from a, um, from a, um, a partial point of perspective that spring growth in the north and central grain areas brings with it fuel loads, brings with it potential fire. What that says to us is that there is a potential this year for an early start to a fire season. Particularly in, particularly in Gippsland, the, the Bureau, if you, so that's the, the um, uh, from, from the fuel load point of view, if the Bureau then says that the warmer daytime temperatures are expected from now on moving forward, thank Christ some people would say, given it seems by bloody cold, lower than average rain, which we're already seeing. So it's, it's, it's crystal ball stuff, so it's a bit hard to tell, and you probably know that we quite often get October rains. And the water storages obviously are, uh, uh, sorry, the water, I'm not allowed to move around. The water storages are obviously um, are low already, so if we don't get rain, that that's probably not likely to change. Now, I guess the interesting thing for us, uh, sorry, the interesting for us then is it's, you know, it's sort of like the Bureau, you know, there's an average chance it's going to rain and there's an average chance it's not going to rain. Um, so it could rain and it could not rain. But I guess the issues for us is compared to last year, we're in flood in, in a nutshell. Compared to last year, there's going to be a lot more crop in the space. So you could get some, um, you know, we had a lot of header fires last year. 
Uh, we suspect that the fire season potentially could start earlier. Interesting enough, I've asked for the fire season preparedness work to be brought forward. On the back of that, DELP and Parks Victoria, to be fair, probably doing their own analysis, have done the same thing. So they're also bringing, so all the fire services in the state are bringing their fire season preparedness work uh, forward. Um, and it is more likely that we will have some sort of fire season this year than particularly we did last year, just on the back of what we know right now. I guess that's it in a nutshell. So on the back of that, um, we're doing, and I think, there is, uh, there is a, a video that's online that you can have a look at um, and you can hunt for that. On the back of that, um, I wanted to ask Jamie to come along and talk about some of the preparedness work that we're doing both from an operational perspective and from a, um, a community preparedness perspective. So over to you, Jamie, cheers. Uh, thank you, Steve, and good morning, everybody. Um, so I just wanted to give you a bit of a rundown on the service delivery preparedness program, um, which will be foreign to a lot of people, but it's a program that ensures uh, that the CFA is prepared for the fire season. Uh, and it's not just brigades out in the districts, uh, but it's our districts and regions and also headquarters directorates that support operations throughout a fire. Um, the idea of the SDPP is to provide assurance to the Chief Officer and CEO um, that CFA is prepared to meet its legislative responsibilities. <coughs> so um, the, way, the way this works, um, as Steve mentioned, we've brought that forward by at least a month or six weeks uh, so that we're on top of things and we can have a report prepared by October. Um, the, the program consists of an audit and inspection. So the DCOs will come out to the districts and regions um, with myself and the Assistant Chief Officers present. Um, prior to that, we will have compiled a list of uh, documentation um, that's required to be cited by our team as a way of proving, you know, evidentially that uh, some of our pre-season readiness and preparedness activities have taken place. And what we've done this year and off the back of last year is tried to streamline that a lot so that the, the visits from the Deputy Chiefs can be a lot more productive and have a constructive conversation with the operations staff in the field. Um, and we found that's a really good way of getting feedback prior to the season about some of the risks and issues that they're facing uh, leading up to summer. Um, so all that's great, but I think you're probably all sitting there going, well, what do you actually do? What are you looking at? What are we, what are we actually trying to achieve? Um, so some of the things, I won't go through everything because it's a, a long-winded exercise, but some of the things we look for are the IMT, so incident management team capability and planning. Um, we ensure that the districts and regions are complying with their readiness requirements based on the fire danger index. So at certain days of a certain FDI, um, districts are required to be ready for different levels of response. So that might include the strike teams being on standby, uh, fire investigation teams being on standby, uh, predetermined dispatch of aircraft, being ready uh, and a number of other, other things. We make sure that the major events plans are up to date, um, business continuity plans are up to date, the local um, mutual aid plans are in place, so they're local arrangements with uh, not only the districts that border um, each district, um, but the other agencies involved there as well. Um, and, and then some of our operational readiness out in the field. So right now, across the districts and regions, despite it being freezing cold and wet, there are people out there checking staging areas. Um, they're checking landing sites for, for aircraft. There's IMT refresher training going on. They're checking ICCs and RCCs, local command facilities, the district command centre, for the systems and processes and training and personnel. So everything's up to scratch. And I know it can feel a bit strange when you're looking outside and it's pouring with rain and you're getting prepared for summer, 
but this is a process that takes a little bit of time and we want to ensure that by October that everything is ready to go. And I think that is essentially SDPP in a nutshell. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, so the question is how long this process takes uh, to do around the state. Uh, this year we're aiming to have it done in six weeks. Um, in the past it's gone from two months to maybe 10 weeks, uh, but we're really trying to consolidate it this year because we have got a pretty short window of opportunity. So Jamie, I might have one. Um, so you, we do that for the brigades and regions this year, you've brought, this year you've broadened it out to the functional and directorates within CFA. Can you explain some of that stuff? Yeah, so this year um, there's always been a requirement for headquarters directorates to be involved in the SDP process. Um, SDP. SDPP, <laughs> Service Delivery Preparedness Program. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. And um, so this year we've put a, a greater emphasis on the executive. So they're the executive directors of each directorate to be accountable for some of those readiness actions uh, within their teams. So through the executive, um, we've established a reporting regime, which is a fortnightly uh, reporting requirement. And there are a number of uh, issue, uh, readiness activities that they need to undertake and report on uh, fortnightly. Um, so some of those, for example, are uh, the ICT support arrangements, our community engagement and education activities and plans. Uh, that includes the signing off of neighbourhood safer places. Our community fire refuges all get tested and um, there's a bunch of legislative responsibilities we have to abide by there as well. Um, our infrastructure support arrangements, that's quite intense. That goes from everything from vehicle readiness to the um, State Logistics Centre readiness. Uh, there are State Control Centre exercises. Our MOUs, our memorandums of understanding, all need to be updated and we ensure that all our doctrine is um, current and relevant. Any other questions for Jamie? So, thanks Jamie. So, the su to sum up for mine, if you go to the season that was not last year but the year before, we, we lost houses in Lancefield in October. That's probably what, six, maybe eight weeks away. So that puts it in perspective. So from now on, we'll be doing everything from at brigade level, ensuring that every crew does a burnover drill for their safety. There's a uh, hazardous tree video and program that every crew must go through. That uh, at district level, they'll be doing exercises right through to directorates. Where we're asking directorates to help and assist to um, do their, their share of the load in, in a fire season preparedness sense. So I guess what we're here today to say, hey, there's some science there that says it could be on um, and it's time for us to get ready and it's important that people here in headquarters are fully connected with, with our thinking. So that's probably the main message from a fire season uh, point of view. Before I open up then for broader questions, I'll speak uh, just a little bit of background on what's happening in the reform sense. So you would have seen yesterday that the select committee released what they called the interim report. Um, now, an interim report that we were expecting to be a final report, but essentially what that was was a list of all the uh, transcripts of all the uh, conversations, so it was quite an extensive, in, extensive interim report. The final report probably is still going to come next week. Uh, from that, you could expect there'd be some sort of government response to that final, uh, final um, uh, report from the Select Committee, and we, we suspect the Select Committee, if you're still with me, will have a major and a minor report, but nonetheless there'll be a government response to that, at which case there'll be um, a potential chance for amendments to the legislation. It could, could either not go up at all, it could go up as it is, or it will go up with some, some amendments. Um, and then, uh, uh, then we'll know, we think probably by the end of August, what will happen as far as the reform was concerned. Um, so just be aware that that's going through a process. You see a little bit on uh, response times. We were asked and provided the select committee with response times and there was some discussion. Uh, that was for our classification five and four brigades because they're the bigger urban brigades and that allows us to compare 
um, like brigades with like brigades. So that's probably what's happening in, is there anything else to add, Liz, in that space? But probably what's happening in that. So in a sense, it's uh, good old fireways, hurry up, hurry up and wait, and we'll and find out what's happening in the reform. So our, our message in the interim is, in a sense, probably the one you've already heard, which is, hey, um, the politicians can get on and make their decisions as far as what they're going to do in regard to legislative reform and change. Our role will be, whatever happens, to continue to ensure that the safety of Victorians is not compromised and we're able to continue to uh, provide a, a service into a summer period that could be quite operationally busy for us. So I'm happy to take, and I've got Liz here on IR stuff who will have a bit more knowledge, Jamie on preparedness work. We haven't talked about what the community, and so we actually not only preparing us that we've talked about largely today, we haven't talked about, um, and maybe that's for another time, what we do in community fire guards, in briefings, and in sort of ramping that up. And you, you're always damned if you do and damned if you don't, because it's what the the, the girl that cried wolf. Um, the reality is, um, you know, as soon as you do that, it buckets down rain, we have floods, and you know, we, we, we called it too early. So it's too early to make the call, um, but certainly um, we're getting ready to make the call, if you understand what I'm trying to say, and in, in, a, in a community's preparedness sense. So we haven't done that, pulled that trigger just yet. And I am just waffling on, if you haven't picked it up, because no one's sticking their hand up for questions. So I'm going, oh, Gregory, thank you. So a parallel to 2006, 2006, uh, 2003, 2006 were campaign, campaign years. It went for months of firefighting. Um, so basically Rob's question was if people around here in this room and, uh, and watching this want an opportunity to get involved, um, obviously at the State Control Centre people are on rosters and any, anything from uh, warnings and advice, media through to situations, planning um, and resources uh, and a, a number of activities. And interesting when you looked at the map there before, we need to ca cast an eye on interstate uh, support and in, uh, for me uh, the Canadians have already come back to another rotation of support into Canada as well. So the interstate and international liaison type teams as well. So there's a number of activities just within the State Control Centre. A number of regional um, facilities, ICCs and regional control facilities within CFA that are within hitting distance from here as well. And I'm talking about, uh, it could be the, the Lilydale Regional Office or Kangaroo Ground, etc, etc. But look, the, the first port of call is your line manager. Um, there are some teams that, that give tremendous support to the extent that it almost uh, doesn't allow us to run our core business because everybody wants to go and there's other teams that we probably get hardly any support um, into the state. So, so it is about, as Greg said before, ensuring you get line management support. So I, I would suggest the best way of doing it is see what's available, have a talk around, speak to your line manager. We might be able to put something out and let people know through. Um, we'll put something out, Rob. Any other questions or thoughts? Hey, look, quick meeting's a good meeting. Thanks for your time this morning. Um, if there's no more, uh, I do appreciate you coming down. We'll just do these every now and again to make sure you're kept in the loop. Have a good day. Cheers.